Hey guys, what's up? This is Jason Yu from eStar Training Team. Today we're going to illustrate how to set up your telephone system based on eStar S-Series VoIP PBX. The S-Series VoIP PBX is a hybrid IP PBX with rich features and excellent integrability, which specifically offers enterprise-level functions and services to SMB users. What's more, it comes with a web GUI-based operation platform. Nothing overwhelms, everything strictly forwards point and click, simple and logical. By this video series, we will walk you through it step by step to show you how to set up your S-Series VoIP PBX all the way from system preparation to call controls and maintenance. Now, let's just get started with our first lesson, the initial settings. As it mentioned, our configuration platform is based on the web GUI. So, to log into the configuration platform, all you need is just a web browser. Most web browsers out there like IE, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, or Opry are totally supported. We do suggest using Google Chrome if you want to try out this web GUI while watching this video. You can simply put in the IP address of the PBX to get access to it. All eStar products, including the S-Series VoIP PBX we're talking about in this session, come with the same default IP address, which is 192.168.5.150. The first step you're going to do is to change the IP address of the computer you're using currently to the same network segment 5. Here we take Windows 10 as an example to show you how to configure this. You could visit Internet settings simply by clicking on the Internet icon on your mission panel. Choose the Open Network and Sharing Center and find the connection to the PBX. Right-click on it to choose Properties. The IP address setting is in the Internet Protocol version 4. You can change your IP address right over here. And then just get back to the web browser. Enter the default IP address, 192.168.5.150. You will see the login page, where you just need to put in the default username and password for the administrator, admin and password. Now, for the first time ever, you're in the web GUI. We need to change the IP address of this PBX so that it could be connected with our local network. We can go to the settings, find out the network setting, and change the default IP address to the one you want to assign to this equipment. Let's take this IP address as an example. At the same time, you can decide if you want to use only your LAN port or both of your LAN and one port for its own separate network. And we have bridge mode. In bridge mode, you can basically use two ports as a switch with LAN port connected to the upstream and one port to the downstream. Anyway, once you are done with your IP address, just click on save. The PBX will start rebooting, and uh, you can actually change back the IP address of your computer while waiting for your PBX to get back online. When logging to the system for the very first time, you will see this start guide, where the system instructs you to change your default password for the administrator. We suggest you to make a replacement with a complicated password to secure your system. If it takes a while for your decision, you could just click on next and skip it. What's more, you can bind with an email address to your administrator account, which will be used to receive notification and alert sent by the system, as well as to find back your password. Put in the email address and move on. Then, of course, you will need a mailbox set in the PBX, so it can send out formally mentioned emails. There are many functions actually depend on this mailbox, like voicemail to email, fax to email, Besides that, all notifications and alert, either. So, please confirm with the provider of your email service. Put in the required information. After that, just click on Test to reconfirm that your mailbox has been configured correctly. Once you've finished all those three steps, you won't see the pop-out anymore. But you can always go to the account icon whenever you want to change your mind. 
The next step of the configuration is to set our system time. Even though it might get ignored easily, it's in fact a very important thing to do. Because our core functions like call management is completely working based on it. Besides, if you need to check your CDR from time to time, you have to set your system time correctly. Otherwise, it will never make sense. We do need to get to the system catalog, setting date and time. You can synchronize your system time to an NTP server directly if you have an internet access for your PBX. We have a default NTP server URL pre-configured. However, you can set one yourself as well. And then just choose your time zone and uh, choose if you want to enable daylight saving time. If you do not want to connect your PBX to the internet, you can also set the time manually, clicking on set manually. The system time of your PBX will be automatically synchronized with the computer you are using right on the moment. If it's necessary, you can also make a change here. Voice prompt can function under various circumstances as a way for the PBX to interact with callers and colleagues, like to prompt colleagues that agents are occupied. You can set your voice prompt in settings. In PBX catalog, you can find it easily. Let's go straight to System Prompt page. All languages package embedded will be shown on this list. By default, it only comes with the English package. However, it does support multi-language voice prompt in the system. If your PBX is connected to the internet, you can just click on Download Online Prompt. Then, all available language packages will pop out. Select the one that you need and click on Download. After that, you will see this language package has existed in the prompt list. You can choose one as the default voice prompt in your system. The rest of packages can also function at the same time for the specific personnel who speak other languages. We will have a further discussion about it in our next session. Alright guys, that was all for the video. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that button if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe. By the way, here I also share with you guys a link for more information about eStar Academy. If you want more eStar updates, just follow us on Twitter and Facebook. And hopefully see you guys in the next video.